All right. Welcome everyone to this um, this session brought to you by learn.wordpress.org. Uh, this is the is intro to WordPress Accessible Color presented by Joey Simpson Jr. And I am your host, Courtney P.K. I am a contributor to the WordPress training team. Um, we bring you the educational resources at learn.wordpress.org. Um, and we do we try to do uh, sessions like these daily on a variety of subjects. Um, so if you're just joining us uh, a Lauren WordPress workshop for the first time, welcome. All right, so our agenda today, uh, we'll have some introductions and a welcome, which we're in the process of doing right now. Um, and then Joe will present his presentation, uh, Intro to WordPress Accessible Color. Uh, we'll have some time for questions and discussion at the end, and, and of course, wrap it up at the end with the conclusion. Um, note that uh, I will be monitoring the chat for questions, and we'll be saving questions till the end. Uh, so if you have any questions for Joe as he's presenting, um, uh, just make sure you throw them in the chat and I'll make sure to get back to those at the end. So again, about uh, online workshops, like the one you're sitting in right now, this is a space where we learn together. So you can ask questions in the chat at any time. Um, if you happen to know the answer to someone else's question or have anything to add to the conversation, please feel free to contribute live in the chat. Um, this and other online workshops are recorded and uploaded to WordPress.tv. So um, this session will be posted on WordPress.tv within, within about 24 hours um, of this workshop. So here's that link if you'd like to keep that handy. Um, and lastly, online workshops like these are hosted by a variety of folks that enjoy WordPress and giving back to the community. So if you have a WordPress related topic that you're excited about, um, you too can host an online workshop like this. Um, and I'm happy to help you make those ideas happen. Uh, the training team is here to, to help you with that journey. It's about us. Um, as I said, my name is Courtney PK. I'm a contributor to the Make WordPress training team. Um, I've also contributed to the community team and TV team. Um, the community team is uh, where I met Joe. Um, Joe is has been a contributor to the community team, the accessibility team. Uh, you can tell us a lot more about it <laughs> in a moment, but. Um, yeah, Joe is the organizer of the Santa Clarita Valley Meetup Group. Uh, he's an accessibility advocate. He's a designer, a developer. He's a Joe of all trades. <laughs> I, I am very, very happy to have him here today. Um, and I will hand it over to you, Joe. I will stop sharing my screen. Sounds good. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name's Joe, as mentioned. Um, we're gonna talk about color today. We're all visual creatures. We often see the world through the prism of color. Color is closely tied to our identities. It's how we express our personalities. It's how we wanna be perceived. It's who we are. Welcome to Intro to WordPress Accessible Color. Today, we're gonna to talk about the basics of color, accessibility, and WordPress. So let's get after it. There's an old saying, we eat with our eyes first. I've seen so many times where, you know, I'll sit something in front of my daughter and if it doesn't look right, she won't eat it. Color also has the same effect as music. It has an emotional connection that we often make. Music touches us in a certain way. It sort of identifies us with a point in time in our lives. But can you imagine a world without color? This picture here, would you imagine that this person really looks like this? Color is a form of expression. 
It's how we want to be seen. Again, welcome to Intro to Color. One of the things I, I generally start uh, many of my presentations with is this photo. Way back, um, maybe five, six, seven years ago, I could just imagine this scenario. At the NFL offices in New York, a hot young intern came in with, you know, full of ideas that was, that was gonna change the NFL for the better. It was gonna cause more sales of jerseys. They said, hey, we're gonna do the color rush, NFL color rush jerseys. How many folks remember um, that are sport fans? Um, these uniforms that were all one color in the beginning, it was no stripes or anything. It was just splashes of color. And in this particular game, this was the first game between the Jets and the Bills, a green team and a red team played. And it was very controversial because someone that had color blindness saw this. The reds and greens for people with color blindness were seen as gray. So on the screen, when they were watching TV, the grass was green, you know, the strip around the, um, the padding around the stadium was green. It was gray, everything was gray. And it was such a disaster from a PR standpoint uh, that they made changes eventually. A lot of times designers don't take into consideration their entire audience. And that's what I, I generally talk about when I talk about accessibility. It's like, how many of us set out a product and don't want as many people as possible to buy it? Do you want less money? Do you want less eyeballs on your webpage? Do you want less impact? Of course not. So why would you do things like the NFL and, and limit your audience potential. So I have a confession to make. These books on the wall uh, are from a, a distant past part of, a distant part of my past. I was a graphic designer for the first 14 years of my career out of college. And I learned about things like color theory, um, how color makes an impact. And as a graphic designer, um, I would think of Bewitched and how Darren would pitch a concept and he would make an emotional connection with his client and they would, you know, they would say, oh, this yellow looks great and they would buy it. And a lot of times as a graphic designer, that's what we do. But we don't think about how color affects our audience and especially in the web space, color is a critical part of getting your message across. Because again, we often see things first. My path was, was as follows. I started as an intern in high school uh, at Henry Ford Medical Center. It was a, the largest uh, hospital brand in Michigan. When I was in college, I worked at Unisys, which was, uh, at that time, it was going through a merger between Burrow and Sperry. They became the, the largest computer company where I was in their brand, um, their brand identity group. And I, uh, my first job out of college, I worked up the street. Uh, I, I lived in Highland Park, Michigan, which was the home of Model T. I worked at the Chrysler Corporation, which was also going through a merger at the time at the Pinner Group, which is their brand. So I've always been associated with big brands. And I currently work at Metro, Metro here in Los Angeles, which is the third largest transportation agency in the country in their brand group. And what, what I've, I've gotten the foundation of thinking about things holistically and as a strategy and as, as, as um, a process in, in terms of communicating to the public. Back in college, as I mentioned, I learned about the psychology of color. Back then, uh, we learned that hospital walls are a certain color to keep people calm. Our elementary schools are the same way. Fast forward, think of Tiger Woods on, on Sunday, he would wear all red in tribute to his mom was of Thai descent. And I guess red is a power color in that culture. So color means different things in different countries and different cultures. It communicates in different ways. And again, as a designer, I mentioned um, how we try to make that connection with our client emotionally uh, by, by what we want to sell to them or the ideas that we want to pitch or how we want to communicate their concepts. So today we're going to talk about an ex, um, intro to accessible color. We're going to first talk about um, color contrast, which is what's really going to impact you in terms of how you're going to build your WordPress sites. We're going to look at some tools on how to help you um, make better color decisions um, by looking at WordPress accessibility ready color themes, uh, accessibility ready themes. 
We're also going to talk about um, how to make color choices inside the WordPress admin when you're working with uh, 2023, as well as look at some browser-based tools and some, some web pages that can also help uh, in this uh, endeavor as well. And then I'm also going to talk about, before we get started, the story I love to share also is uh, when I was on the design side, I had uh, someone in our marketing department at Metro, and she was very insistent on always using PMS uh, 314, which was magenta in everything, whether it's maps, uh, brochures, et cetera. It didn't matter what the client was. Even if we had a gold line event, she would want us put magenta in it. So what I'm trying to communicate to you today is that we all have these blind spots uh, when we're working on things. We, um, I have a friend that works out in the gym and he likes to work on his upper body and his legs are skinny. So what I want you to do when we're thinking about accessibility and color, don't get set in your ways, be open to, to new ideas and also really try to design with your clients in mind. A lot of times we design what we like, what makes us happy, and we don't really think about the client. All right, so I'm gonna give you a few definition slides before we jump off uh, into some, some demos and more, and more discussion, but this is the definition of uh, contrast. Contrast and color are vital to accessibility. Users, including users with visual disabilities, must be able to perceive content on the page. In WCAG 2, contrast is a measure of the difference between the perceived luminance or brightness between two colors, and the phrase color contrast is never used in WCAG, just an, uh, an FYI. And here's more um, WCAG 2.0 uh, AA. It, it requires a certain type size. Um, it also talks about the color crunch, contrast ratio. Uh, and, and level three is a little more stringent and it's a little higher. So these are what you can design to. And these are sort of basic guidelines uh, in terms of this, the color of your fonts and how they work in terms of color contrast. Large text in this, um, what I'm going to show you in terms of demonstration, is considered uh, 14 point or larger. Bold or larger is 18 to 24 pixels. All right, let's jump out and do some demo. Again, put your questions in the chat. We'll get to them at the end. And again, I'm focusing on a small sliver of accessibility. We're going to talk about color contrast because, again, what I always try to do when I do presentations is um, try to, you know, a lot of times when you think of accessibility, people think it's overwhelming, it's daunting. But if you look at, uh, if you take care of little things, it can really improve the quality of the work that you do. Um, there was a, a report on the web aim. They do it each year. It's called the Million Websites Report. They look at a million websites, and I think over 90% fail. So many, it's like six or seven basic things, including color, uh, alt text, et cetera. And if you take care of those small things, it'll make your site uh, more accessible. And that's all, that's all I want you to get from today is make these little changes to your process. It'll improve your skill set. It'll also add to your arsenal um, so that you can charge more and you know, add, adding to your services as a company. It, it creates a niche also. How many developers do you know that develop with accessibility first? How many designers? So again, it's a ready-made niche. It's something that always needs improvement. Like I said, just take a look at the uh, million uh, pages report that comes out each year. And again, there's little things that you can do to get to, get, to put yourself on the path to success. All right. So I'm going to jump off to web pages. Um, all right. So what we have here is um, I spun up a site uh, locally here for demo today. Um, we're in the dashboard. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at a page. All right. Oh, be let me show you one other thing too. Um, on the uh, .org site, um, this is the definition of accessibility ready. We're gonna jump in and take a look in a second. I'm gonna share these links also. Um, this is the definition of accessibility ready. The great thing about using uh, WordPress themes that are um, approved in the repository, and I always, if you've been to a presentation of mine, I always say start with uh, the repository because themes that have the accessibility ready tag have gone through an audit process. They have to meet certain conditions to even be listed in that way. So if you find 
a theme outside of the repository that claims to be accessible and they're not in here, they haven't met these um, guidelines. So I would be a little uh, wary of that. All right, so let's get back into the dashboard. Uh, this is a sample post. Um, all right, so let's take a pattern. We're gonna drop this pattern onto the page. And let me know if everyone can still see the screen. Uh, let me know if you can. All right, so I've dropped in this pattern. Let's take a look at the settings here. You're gonna look at the background. All right, so in terms of color contrast, WordPress has something that's neat that's in the back end that you may not have even noticed. Like say for instance, we're gonna, let's make the background black. What you see, you can't see the text, but over here on the right, if you notice, this pop-up occurred. It says the color combination may be hard for people to read. Try using a brighter background color or a darker text color. So built into um, Automatic's um, accessibility ready themes is this feature. So as you're trying to decide on what to use in this part of your block, if you dynamically update it. So for example, when we went to this lime green, now that warning disappeared. So you have a dynamic tool within the admin that allows you to check color. So that's one thing that um, I, I'm sharing. And, I'm, and if, if you already know, kudos, if not, uh, this is a great tool that you can use. So when you're creating your, your text, um, the color of your text, the color of your links, these things are important. And it's, and it's an easy step. It's something you see right away and you could change right away. Another thing that I always recommend is when you're developing things for a client, do these tests early. Don't wait to the end until you design it. It's harder to work backwards um, rather than doing it along the way. So inside the admin, you can do this. Um, again, it's a, it's a dynamic way for you to check color contrast. Um, if you don't get anything on the right, that means that the light blue and the black is good to go. All right. So inside appearance, if you want to find a theme. Um, so how do you find an accessibility ready theme? All right. So um, when you come when you come into the admin in the back end and you see the themes, uh, you can see that um, 2023 is installed and that's what we're demoing right now. Um, let's go over here to feature filter. And what I recommend also is um, under features, you can select accessibility ready. It shows you uh, the one filter that you selected and let's go ahead and hit apply filter. What this does, it shows you all the themes in the repository that it says 87 up here in the upper left-hand corner here, um, 87 themes are considered accessibility ready. All right, so you can go through here, take a look. And again, you could see there's a number of different visual approaches that you could take. Um, and these themes give you at least a foundation or a basis to build on. So um, again, start with an accessibility ready theme. I love the automatic themes just as a starting point, especially if you're using full site editing or, or the block concept and then you could build out your site from there. All right. I talked a little bit about accessibility ready. There's a definition here um, that I'll share with you. Now there's another way that um, I recommend you get into um, checking color in, in your projects. All right, it's through the browser. Uh, one of the great things um, about Chrome and uh, Firefox and, and such browsers is that you can find extensions that do some of this work for you. So a couple that I recommend uh, in terms of color contrast, you can just come in and search for color contrast and it gives you a list of color contrast browser tools that when you install it, it'll put it in your browser. And let's just do a little quick demo here. All right, this is my local city, um, the city local city government. Uh, City of Santa Clarita. We look at their website and I see a few things right away just uh, from my keen eye, but let's go ahead and run one of these browser tools. Um, I installed the WCAG contrast checker. And once you click on it, you can see right away, it says you have um, about half of the, the features that it checked, it, we failed. Um, and as you click on it, you can see on the right hand here, it highlights the area that failed and it tells you why. So it looks like um, there's some issues here. Um, we can see here in the menu, uh, the light blue background with white text is another no-no. 
Um, and so this is a great way to quickly see uh, what the issue is on your site. Another tool that I, I, I appreciate also, and this one I, is, is one that I go to a lot. Um, I'm currently on, um, we're looking at the National Cherry Blossom Festival website. And the reason that I did it, I'm on the, the lead team for WordCamp US and it's gonna be in National Harbor, Maryland, uh, which is right across from DC. And in that area, blossoms happen. Um, when I grew up in Michigan, there was a cherry tree in my backyard, so I have an affinity for it. But this is a beautiful site. There's pinks and whites. It's very festive. But let's take a look at it from color contrast, a color contrast perspective. All right. Um, I'm using this time, I'm using the accessibility to insights for the web. Let's go here and just do a fast pass. The cool thing about this tool is that it has a, a couple of different options for you to check your site. Uh, but a fast pass gives it a quick pass through and it tells you right away. Um, this is our site here, the National Cherry Blossom Festival. It says there's 31 instances that failed right off the bat that it caught. So let's go ahead and expand that. The cool thing about this tool is that you can export this report. You can present it to your client. You can say, hey, this is what failed on your site that we need to work on immediately to make sure that it's accessible for more people. Because again, a lot of folks are facing lawsuits because their sites aren't accessible. So especially for one of your clients, it's important uh, that they consider this too, because as a designer, you're uh, liable as well. I'm not gonna get into the legal thing. I'm just trying to show you some basics here. So I've opened, I've, I've toggled this down. And the cool thing about this is it, it goes through each item and it tells you why it failed. It also gives you a how to fix. So the cool thing, it'll tell you exactly where it's at in the code. You can go in and you can uh, fix that issue. Here for color contrast, it tells you, the thing that I appreciate about this tool is that it tells you how to fix it. It says, hey, this color isn't accessible enough. And sometimes it also makes suggestions uh, in terms of changing it, uh, which can help you as well. So this is a, a great tool to sort of go through, look at specific items, especially color and, and make your changes there. All right, so those are two browser-based tools. And also once you run it and you come back to the page, it also flags the area so you can see the button which is white text on pink and that was a, a that and actually this is a very current design trend you'll see on especially in commercials there's white text on a really um it's a beautiful you know nice light beautiful color but for someone with color contrast issues they can't see it and someone that's colorblind really can't see your product so um so again it tells you where you fail and how you can work on it so you could see just about on every part of this page, there's some issues in terms of um, accessibility or color contrast. All right, the next tool I wanna show you is another go-to for me. Um, these folks at Idaho State University started the WebAIM site. This is a place again, where the, you can see the million web pages report. It comes out every spring. Um, they look at the top trafficked websites and they break it down. Um, they tell you why the homepage just failed. They, they also break down the areas because, again, there's six or seven areas that we all can address on our page uh, to make it more accessible. I like the color contrast tool here because it gives you a breakdown of colors. So, for example, um, Okay, so say you had a, like a, a lighter color. Let's 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 do the pink that we just saw. All right. So say we had pink here. You can copy paste your hexadecimal color into the um, two boxes here. If it's background or foreground, you can do it either way. You can flip them around. Um, it dynamically updates here, but it tells you that it fails. Um, it also says in terms of graphic components like your text boxes and things like that, which we all love to design. The other cool thing is that below um, your dynamic area where you can enter your colors, it has explanations. It also has an API that you can actually build into your process. Um, it also um, points out that Colorzilla is another excellent uh, tool. For those of us that don't have Photoshop, I work in the Adobe Cloud, so I have it. But if you wanna find a tool that can do color picking for you, uh, Colorzilla is the browser-based tool that allows you to do that too. I'm totally into free tools if you're, um, uh, a member in the audience of one of my presentations, or if you come to WordPress Santa Clarita, we always stress uh, open source, free, especially for a beginner or uh, someone that's willing to learn a topic or wanting to learn a topic. It's important that you 
get up and running faster than investing in a premium tool that you may not even like. So again, start with open source free tools and go from there. Uh, they also have a, a, a contrast tech, a, a link contrast checker, which also tells you about your links. How many of us have um, fallen into the design trend of gray hyperlinks? which are incredibly bad in terms of contrast, you would have to go with a very dark gray. So why not just use um, a black and underline your links also, which is another pet peeve of mine. All right, so again, it's great because it allows you to dynamically check your colors. So as you're building, hey, I love this blue, drop it into this box and see how it works. And then the other cool thing is again, you can go ahead and slide the, the dynamic slider until you pass three, four, and um, you get a, a passing grade in terms of color contrast. All right, so let me see what else I have here. Again, this is the uh, link color contrast checker, which does the same thing, which is another thing that I recommend. And this is a, a whole section on contrast and color accessibility. So with those basic tools, um, you get a great start on making your websites accessible. Let's just jump back in and finish up here. I have a couple of resources I want to share with you as well. Go ahead and, all right. Again, the stuff that I talked about today is here. Uh, the, the color picker, the accessibility insights for the web. So make sure you um, grab those links. And, and what I'll do as we start doing questions and answers, I'll, I'll paste these links in the chat as well. And that's it. All right, before we get to the questions and I'll, I'll turn it back over to uh, Courtney so that we can handle that. Um, thanks again for your time today. Again, what I like to do is break down these uh, concepts into small, more digestible chunks. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm glad to see so many familiar faces in the audience because our journey in accessibility is connected. We all, especially uh, in the WordPress community, we always try to help each other. So I'm here for you. I'm here for your questions. Um, and thanks again for your time today. Thank you, Joe. Um, yeah, I'm scrolling back to look at some questions. Um, so we have a few. Um, I scrolled back a little too far. So um, uh, a question from Ron. Um, as a designer, did you ever take one of those online color tests? Um, and should we all, in parentheses, men in particular, always util utilize color analyzer tools when making websites, um, design or building websites? Uh, in terms of color test, I'm not sure what you mean. In terms of, I'm not, I'm not sure if you mean to determine whether I'm colorblind or not. I don't think I've done that. But um, again, back in school, I learned color one way. And then again, as I... Be, became um, more in tune with how I worked in the web space. It was a different thing, user experience and it, the, access, the user experience for accessibility is sort of first and foremost for me. So color is always important. Um, I always design, and I think I've done it from the beginning. Unfortunately, at certain companies, it's not a priority, um, but it's, it's your job to sort of advocate for it. It's Again, it's up to your client, but now that we're faced with the threat of a lawsuit or the threat of legal action if our sites aren't accessible, um, that should bring it more to a for the forefront. And just think about the last three years, uh, what's happened in the world. In terms of the pandemic, most companies shut down. They were forced to move um, their business uh, to their websites. How many restaurants didn't have online ordering? How many restaurants uh, didn't have a, a cart that you could drop your, your order in and have them deliver it um, or have it picked up curbside. So, so many, so much business happened that first couple of years and people trying to get their sites up and running. So it's a niche, it's, it's actually still a, a need. And it's always, um, if you go by the web aim uh, report, there's a lot of work that we need to do. So again, I would always stress, bookmark these color contrast analyzers. Um, again, I would love Ron, if you could share a little bit more about that, what that color test was. Um, but I think I have, um, I'm not colorblind. So I, I, I'd i love to hear more about that. Yeah, that tool that you were, one of the tools you were just using was talking about the blue and white contrast, I think. And I'm noticing my slide here is 
blue and white. So um, yes, that is uh, something that I can improve upon. It's like the the branding for for Learn WordPress. Um, that's something that we need to look at. Um, got another question from Ron. Um, favorite color checker or analyzer? Well. I, I, I generally show the web aim color contrast yeah. analyzer. That's the one I like. I've, there's so many now. I know Adobe and, you know, in the Adobe cloud, they have one. It's really a way to drive traffic to their site. But to me, I love the simple ones. There's also a couple of uh, uh, color contrast analyzers or colorblind testers that I recommend. There's a desktop one that's called uh, DIMS. Something. Well, I, I forgot the name, but it 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 allows you to drag it's sort of a, a box over your a part of your page and it shows it as if someone that was colorblind and there's three uh, forms of colorblind that allows you to test for and you allowed you, it allows you to see it dynamically um there's also one where you can paste in the url of your website and it checks your website and it pulls out a report on the side it's by ben, ben gage and although it's a little uh buggy uh that's one that i've used um in terms of the company I work for, uh, one item that I found during this research, uh, we do a lot of maps and I'm always fighting uh, folks in the agency who want more bells and whistles, you know, maps, they wanna see things popping out and popping over and sliding left and right, but maps are generally not accessible. Um, so there's an ArcGIS color contrast tool that I'm gonna share with uh, my colleagues in our map group. So there's a number of them out there. So part of what I love to do during these presentations also is have people drop their recommendations uh, in the chat as well. Yes, um, yeah, Ron just shared um, color contrast analyzer, TGPI, um, and there's a link there in the chat. Um, there's a awesome. recommendation. Cool. And, I'll, um, and I'll paste mine in the chat also. Great, That we you. just took a look at. All right, Next. what question? else you got for me? Uh, is the built-in color contrast checker that you demoed available in all WordPress themes or just in automatic slash WordPress themes such as 2022? Well, I'll have to confirm because I, I generally use the, the, you know, the core automatic uh, themes for a lot of what I do. I'll check. It could be, I'm, and I don't want to speak out of turn again. What I'll do is I'll, I'll put it in our meetup notes on the page, but I'm assuming that it's part of core. Um, so if you're using mm -hmm. full site editor in the blocks, I'm assuming that it's going to be part of that. So, I, but again, let me check to to make sure. Yeah, Patrick in the chat says it's built into the block editor, but yeah, yeah I'm not. Yeah. I'm also not sure if it's uh, built into core. Um, cool, thank you. Um, scrolling through again, there's there's quite there's quite a bit of chatter here. Um, Question from Lynn. Uh, you had mentioned hey, browser extensions for checking color. Do all or most browsers give the same result? Or should a developer check many different browsers? Well, the these the browser-based extensions, um, these are for Chrome. So I'm assuming that if you're in Firefox, they'll have their extensions. It, it just depends on whether, it's sort of like your iPhone versus your Android. Some apps go cross phone, but some of them don't. Um, I'm assuming that if you have a similar tool in Firefox, it may work differently. Um, the one thing that you love to test between browsers is really to see, um, like for the longest time, IE worked different than Chrome. So your page pages would display differently. So, um, all browsers will probably um, represent your pages differently in terms of structure and things like that. But make sure that you have the tools to check independent of your browser in terms of color contrast. And I think you should be fine. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, Peter also shared a, um, a link for testing a number of colors at once. Uh, so contrast-grid.hshapes.com. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I can check that out. Um, question from Steve. Um, as this is an Elementor meetup, is the Hello Elementor theme one of those accessible themes? 
Um, it's not specifically an element or meetup, but uh, that is that is a good question. I'm not familiar okay. with the hello element or theme. Oh, that's fine. And the, the reason is that I have another, um, I do a different meetup and it's oh. so <laughs> okay. So um the thing about page builders and it's 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 a fact, most page builders allow you a different kind of freedom, which the full site editor and the block experiences is is going after and that gives you drag and drop capabilities the ability to use a whole bunch of different widgets exactly in the way you want but unfortunately the big drawback is that most page builders aren't accessible and you have to do a lot of retrofitting to make it happen so i would say these are not um hello is probably not fully accessible so the thing that i always recommend is like as you build you need to test one test that I, I would always recommend doing, like for instance, the demo that I showed you today, once you spin up a site and you install a theme, run accessibility insights before you do anything. And that'll show you, that'll give you a baseline. That'll say your site is accessible to this point with nothing in it. And then as you add widgets or different features to your site, each time you do that, test it. And that's the way you should really go about it. Because again, these page builders, aren't really accessible and they give you a lot of freedom but at the cost of accessibility accessibility if you look at a lot of what they market or um, a lot of the um you know if you look at their sites they're really pushing your ability to create and design anything um so again that that is also that's kind of counter to mm -hmm. <laughs> making sure everything's accessible because again we see with our eyes we, we're more visual creatures the more bells and whistles we see, the more that we think it's more effective. But really, just think about the most effective sites. Um, Amazon is a really ugly website, but it does something. It, it The service that it provides, it just allows you to get to that sell button quickly. Now, they have accessibility problems on that website. But again, really think about what your client needs in the simplest way to provide them that. Because again, we want more people seeing our information, not just a very specific sliver of an audience. Right. Yeah, uh, Lisa shared a link to the Hello Elementor theme in the chat um, and says that this theme seems to have the accessibility ready tag, um, but uh, but she has never used the theme. So um, yeah, a question that did come up uh, was about the, if the, um, if the themes that are submitted to the repository, um, how are those, how are how those how do those come to be tagged accessibility ready? Uh, as far as I know, the themes team reviews them for for accessibility, as as was mentioned on that handbook page that you shared. Um, yeah. Is that correct? That is correct. Like when so say for instance you want to build a theme, as you get that theme ready, you submit it. To the repository and then they go through a process of evaluating whether the site i mean whether the theme is one ready to go up there may be a little give and take on uh, making sure that your site meets certain criteria but then they also run that accessibility tag check um, accessibility ready check to see if it meets a different set of guidelines but more specific to accessibility mm -hmm. and what do we do if we find a theme that actually isn't accessibility ready and it's in the repo. So do we, how do we submit would, that, that feedback? Well, you can reach out to the developer to see if they're willing to do mm -hmm. that. But I would say start with an accessibility ready theme um, because again, just think about um, a lot of times we're drawn to a theme because of the way it looks. Um, and again, in the accessibility ready realm, there's, I think there were 83 or 87 uh, themes that had different looks and feel that you can start with. And again, you can build to anything using your, your blocks or your patterns and things of that nature. So mm -hmm. um, I would say it makes a little more work if, I mean, if you choose not to do that, that's sort of your choice, but again, it'll make it more difficult for you to, to um, you'll have to do more work to bring it into compliance. Yeah, thank you. Um... Looks like we don't have any more questions related to the to your presentation. Um, lots of good information in there. Thank you. Um, I see. Let's see. There were, it's a question from from Ron for me. Uh, good captions on this session and are 
Are we using a live caption or is this the auto captioning from Zoom? This is actually the auto captioning on Zoom. Um, I am guessing that that has improved a lot in um, in the last few months or so because um, I often found it not 100% accurate. I would always manually go over the um, the captions after these sessions and uh, and edit them make sure and review them for accuracy so um before i upload them to wordpress.tv so um yeah it's good to know that um the captions for this session have been great um so thank you um let's see i don't see any more questions here um if if i missed your question please feel free to, to paste it in there again um i did scroll through and just really quick to find um, anything that people prefaced with the word question. Um, but yeah, we just have folks uh, just chiming in here. Yeah, I'm taking a look also. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so awesome too. I, I see Sumner is out there. Hey, Sumner. <laughs> Sumner is uh, someone that's really important in our community um we have a whole bunch of meetups that sort of spawned out of a, a presentation that she did in terms mm -hmm. of accessibility so she's very impactful on on what we're doing in the community so it's always good to see her here yes a couple more questions here um any future enhancements coming in wordpress that are specifically accessibility related ah that's a great question. Um, I'm part of my journey this year, and, and it started about six months ago, was I wanted to do some behind the scenes stuff. I wanted to see how themes were made um, and how accessibility is being um, folded into WordPress. So each time there's a release, how do they make improvements in terms of accessibility? So I joined the Make Accessible team uh, for WordPress. And each Friday, there's a bug scrub that goes through um, a list of issues that are reported. So if you find an issue with, and it goes back to your question or the item that you pulled earlier, um, if there's an issue with the theme, you can submit it and they'll take a look at it in the GitHub repository um, and they'll address it if they have the opportunity to. Um, and then also we have a meeting every other Friday where we talk about um, what's coming in the next release um, how do we uh, fold in accessibility? Another key component, and again, that's why I'm sort of wearing all white today, is I want to make sure that we get more people involved in that part. We need people to test. Um, so even though I'm not a developer, um, I tested uh, the last round. Um, and you get to, um, for me, I'm always interested in how people use it. So um, there's a, a script that I, I go through in, in terms of accessibility, how does someone use part of the full site editor. So that way they make improvements. We report those, people address them. And so each iteration of, of the full site editor, they're building more in. And, and the one thing that I'm kind of happy about, and again, I, I haven't been with the team long, is that a lot of these, each time we go through one of these um, updates or version, uh, as we move up in terms of versions, there's more accessibility that's being built in uh, because of the suggestions made by the team and through um, the process. So. Um, it's always a work in process. I don't have specifics, but I know, again, it's related to um, how the, the editor is functioning. Um, I know at the beginning, and it's still a cause for hesitancy for some people, they felt like the back end isn't usable in terms of someone that um, has to use it if they're accessible. So a lot of those things are being worked on. But again, it, it's, it's a slow process, but it's awesome to see behind the scenes how they're uh, trying to make it work. Thank you. Um, uh, question from Sumner. Um, what do you do when a client protests your color selections? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a that's a great question. And it's it's sort of uh, um, there's a story that Sumner shared with us. Um, it, it was sort of it's a it's a great story. And I and I hope she she's OK with me sharing it. But she had a client. Um, they insisted on a certain color scheme. And, and, and at Metro, I do the same thing now based on this story. Um, they were insistent on a certain um, 
color scheme. So she said, at least let me show it to your partner. Um, so she took it to the partner and they found out that he was colorblind and he couldn't see the, mm -hmm. <laughs> the color. So that made the point that everyone, you know, you, we assume that, you know, because of our brilliance or because of our eye for color, that we know what's better um, for the customer. So you really need to test it, show it to someone. And um, what I've done at Metro back in the day, I did uh, some user tests. So it's really good to record people um, doing, um, I think uh, Hotjar allows you to um, uh, record user sessions to see how people use your site. It's also it would be great if you can get people in and you could just uh, do some tests to see if they can find something on your site just to see how people use it. So I would say if you have an example or someone um, showing them that these colors aren't accessible or the reasons why, I mean, you really need an example to show them um, if you can't persuade them just through logic. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that question, Sumner. Um, question from Steve. What are your thoughts on the one-click accessibility plugin, which was developed in part by the Hello Bean folks? Um, and there's a link here. Um, Pojo-accessibility. Uh, I haven't used it, Steve. I, I'll have to test it. Um, I know, um, like it was. There's a couple of things from this meeting uh, that I need to check on uh, in the Elementor space. Like the the one click. I'm always a little hesitant um, because, again, if it sounds too good to be true, a lot of times it's not. Um, but I'll, I'll I'll I promise you this. I'll I'll take a look at it. Um, I'm, and I, and again, I can't really respond because I haven't used it yet. Yeah, Sumner mentions in the chat that Pojo is an overlay. Ooh. Overlays do not work. Yes. And uh, overlays yeah, that's, more than help. <laughs> yeah, and I was going to say the thing that really happened, you know, during that time when a lot of businesses uh, um, had to close and go to an online format, uh, these overlay companies popped up and because um, they gained in popularity because they promised, hey, we can take care of all of this with just popping this little um, uh, accessible, you know, the little accessible guy icon in the lower left-hand part of your screen, when it actually in, impedes the ability for someone with an accessible, with an accessibility challenge to access, you know, to use your site. So um, part of what we always do is we always try to dissuade people from using uh, overlays at any cost. And one of the success stories that I'm, I'm proud of, and again, Sumner was really critical in this um, meetup about four or five months ago, they used, they popped up one of those accessibility overlays oh, right. on their site, mm -hmm. and the WordPress community went nuts. And um, I was part of the team that met with Meetup and uh, Sumner as well to say, hey, you really should pull this down and this is why, and it actually worked. So um, right. one of the things that we always try to do is if, and, and there's another uh, success story, uh, someone in our community, uh, Alicia Rose, uh, when we were doing this project for the air competition, um, we were using Generate Press and she would find things and she would reach out to the theme developers and they would make adjustments. So just ask. You never know if, it, if it'll work or not. Um, and these are just two examples that did work. Um, unfortunately, there's a couple that uh, I've tried to uh, do the same that haven't. But all you can do is ask. And again, if they're willing to improve their product and make it more open to more people, um, they should. Thank you. Yeah, we have folks talking about more, talking more about overlays in the chat. Um, no. Yes, it's not. It I know, is, that's it. Sally maybe, says, that, maybe that'll be my second topic here. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, Sally mentions uh, accessibility is not a thing you can do in one click. Um, yeah, you, yeah. And as Ron says, got to do the work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Peter also shared a link uh, to overlayfactsheet.com. Um, oh, that's a great one. That's a great one. Yeah, there was a, a petition that went around as part of that. Um, because again, during the pandemic, it became such an annoyance that there was a response from people on our side that really wanted to inform people. Because again, a lot of times it'll be a sales call to you know somebody at the company and they think it's a great idea and they go ahead and just do it without researching it. Because again, it sounds too good to be true. Hey, I can pay this much money a year to take care of this problem that really mm -hmm. a developer should work on. Let me buy that. So it's something that you really want to avoid at all costs. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would say, Ron, I wouldn't have put that link in there. But. <laughs> We don't have any further questions uh, on accessibility. Um, yes, lots of lots of talking about uh, overlays. But yes, maybe this is like a, a future a future topic for a workshop. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but, but what my hope was, and again, uh, we started with a really basic topic, and I generally talk mm -hmm. um, to a beginner's audience, is because you're the people that will carry this message out and you'll be able to talk to your client, at least talk to them, make them aware of it. Mm -hmm. And again, you're informing them on something that they could easily do. And it really benefits their bottom line. Again, who wants fewer people to buy their product? Who wants fewer eyeballs on their site? So if you're driving people away by not creating accessible content or content that's easier to, to read with a screen reader or other assistive device, I mean, you're limiting your audience. There's a whole segment of the population that's want they want to give you their money so build sites that welcome everybody Agreed. yeah thank you for for sharing your knowledge with us joe um i agree with you it's like we have to start somewhere uh starting with the, these in introductory topics can help a lot of folks get started um and accessibility is a a huge topic we have an entire make wordpress team uh, dedicated to it. So uh, we are all doing our best to, to make our sites accessible. And this is a great start. So thank you, Joe. Oh, thank you. And again, <laughs> this is a this is a full circle moment for me. Again, I remember way back when you helped me start our meetup here. So uh, yes. it's just my pleasure to, to, to talk with you again and, and share with the, the Learn community. Yeah, same here. So again, learn.wordpress.org is where you can find um, more workshops like these. Uh, we also have uh, tutorial videos for learning about uh, specific subjects. They're usually like five to 10 minutes long. Um, and there are also um, lesson plans if you're an educator or a meetup organizer. If you're looking for a topic to, to teach at your meetup, um, you can find lesson plans there. Um, and uh, yeah, if you'd like to join some conversations about WordPress, uh, we have a Slack where all the contributors to the WordPress open source project chat about the work that we're doing. So you can join that at chat.wordpress.org. Um, if you want to save the chat from Zoom, uh, you can click the, like, the three dot icon on the chat window and save the chat. So all the links that were shared in the chat, you can have saved locally. Um, I think uh, we'll also be providing a link to the recording with captioning um, within the next 24 hours or so on wordpress.tv. Um, I think that is it for me. And yes, we're right in under an hour. So thank you everyone for, for joining us today. I'll see you next time. See you, folks.